Hello and welcome, I'm Dave. Today we will learn how to pass arguments from the command line in Python. And I'll provide links to all resources in the description below. I've got VS Code open, I have an open folder over here named Lesson 15, and we're going to create a new file, and let's call this file hello underscore person dot pi. To accept arguments from the command line, that is values that we will pass in to the programs that we call, we need to use a module, so we will import arg parse, and that is part of the Python standard library. When we previously discussed Python modules, I gave a link to the Python module index, and we can see the arg parse module right here. It says command line option and argument parsing library. I also want to call your attention to the Python standard library page, and this shows kind of the different modules instead of in the index that we had on the other page, it shows them kind of in feature areas here. So different things you can look at, a different way to find the same thing. So if I search the page with control F for arg parse, we can once again find it under generic operating system services. So just another way to find the modules that you would be looking for. Back in VS Code, let's go ahead and define a parser and we'll set this equal to arg parse and then dot, then we'll say argument parser. And from there, we'll use parentheses and we're only going to pass in some of the basic settings that we can for this argument parser. But if you look back at that module page for arg parser, you will see many other settings as well. Here, we'll just say description equals, and then we'll say provides a personal greeting. Whoa, I'm not spelling good today. There we go, provides a personal greeting. So we have set the basic description for our argument parser. Now let's say parser.addArgument, and there we'll go ahead and pass a few different values. First, we're going to put in a value that you could use at the command line as a flag. So just dash in. This will be short for name. So we'll also say you could also provide dash dash name, which is just a long version of the same thing. So you could use either one of these at the command line, and I'll show you how. Then there's another setting here we'll call meta var, and we set that equal to name as well. Now this is just the display name if you get a message that refers back to this argument. Now we're going to say this is required, so here we just set that equal to true, and then we can also provide a help message. And here let's just say the name of the person to greet. And that should be all we need to add this argument to our parser. Now let's say args equals parser dot parse underscore args, and that is a method on parser. So we just call that, and now we should get those different arguments. So when we want to print a message at this point, let me define the message, and I'll use an f string. So we'll have f and a quotation, and I'll say hello, and then inside of this, we'll say args dot name. Now where is name coming from? Let me put an exclamation mark behind this. But where is name coming from? Well, you see this value right here that says name. Now that's pretty much what it's going to refer to. However, if you want to assign something different, we could say dest and set that equal to, let's say, first name. Then you would no longer use name here, you would use first name, for example. So either way, I usually use dest off, and we just refer back to name. So let me go ahead and remove that, and we'll see how that works as well. I'll quickly click yes here, but underneath our last one, we actually need to go ahead and print our message also. So there is a basic example of using the arg parser. Now, let's go ahead and use this in a terminal window. I'm going to press control in the back tick to open our terminal window that I've already got over here on the right. Control B to hide the file tree so we can see a little bit more of our code and then Alt Z to wrap any code down that was extending out of the window. So now it wraps down to a second line. Now we can't use the play button like we used to to call this file because we need to pass an argument. So we're just going to type right here in the terminal and I'll type pi because I'm on Windows. But if you're on Mac or Linux, you're probably going to need to type Python 3. I'll type pi. And then I want the file name, which is hello underscore person dot pi. But if I press enter right now, 
I'm going to get an error. Let's go ahead and do it to see what happens. And it says we have an error. It shows the usage here. And of course the dash H is for help. Then we have the dash N and it's referring to a name. And then it says the error, the following arguments are required. That's because we required this argument over here. So let's try this once again, or let's even see what the help does. So let's go ahead and pull this up again and then just do dash H for help and let's see what we get. Now we get our provides a personal greeting. So that's the description we passed in up here and it shows the options. And of course, dash H for help and dash in for name, the name of the person to greet. So let's once again, pull that up. And now instead of dash H, I'll say dash in and I'll pass in my name as a string, just Dave. And we get back, hello Dave. Now that's what's expected. Let's once again close our terminal window for the time being. And now let's create a function just above everything we have, even the import, which I know is something you haven't seen me do before, but let's do it this time. And let's say def hello. And we're going to pass in not only a name, but also a language that I'll abbreviate as lang. Now inside this function, I'm going to define a dictionary called greetings. Inside the dictionary, I'm going to use English and I'll match that to the value of hello that needs to be a string also. After that, let me copy these lines down with shift alt and the down arrow twice and I'm going to change these. So the second one is going to be Spanish and that will be hola. And then the third will be German. And that will be close instead of hello, as we say in English, it's hello with an A. Okay, after those three, let's go ahead and define our message. Once again, message equals an F string. And inside of this string, it's going to start with the value that we get from the dictionary. So greetings, and then we're going to refer to whatever we get in that lang param that is up here. And then after that, we want a space, and then we're going to use the name param value, the parameter. So as we pass these values in, remember they're called arguments, but when we define a function, these are parameters, or as I often say, params. Okay, now we're going to have a print once again for that message. So that's what our hello function is going to do. It's going to determine the language, we're going to have a name, and we're going to say hello in the requested language. Now someone could import this function from this file if they wanted to. And if you remember what we learned about modules, we can go ahead and put our if name equals main here to then only run the code underneath if this file is actually the file being ran and it's not having the hello function imported from somewhere. So we'll say if two underscores name, two more underscores, and we'll say equals, and we need two equal signs as well, then we'll have two underscores main and two more underscores, and then our colon. Now everything is going to need to be tabbed over. So I'll highlight everything and tab over once. And now remember we have a second argument. So let's add another argument to our parser underneath. So we'll say parser dot add argument. And now here we're going to call this one L instead of dash N. So we'll have dash L, we'll also have dash dash lang. And then we'll have a meta var. And just to point out that they're not the same here, I'll put the full word language instead of lang, but we're still going to refer to lang when we get the value. After that, on the next line, I'm once again going to say required equals true. And then we can pass choices. So we can have specific choices here. And if these choices are not correct, then an error will occur once again. So here we'll make sure that the values we want are passed, either English or Spanish or German are the choices. And then after those choices, let's go ahead and put in a help value as well. And here we'll say the language of the greeting. And that's, that's good enough, just the language of the greeting. Okay, now that we've defined that, we need to change what we're doing below. We still want to get the args from the parser with parse args, but then here, we're not just going to print this, we're going to call our hello function. So we'll say hello, and we'll pass in the args.name, and then we'll also pass in the args.lang. So quickly to review before we use this code, we just created our hello function above, 
And then if this is the file that's called into action, then we'll use the arg parse. So that's why the import is down here. It's not needed up here at all. And then we'll go ahead and use this and we pass the two arguments to the parser. And then we call the hello function with those values. Let's once again, press control and the back tick to open a terminal. I can clear this out by typing clear as well, just so we start at the top. And now let's go ahead and say pi, or once again, if you're on Mac or Linux, Python 3, and we'll have hello underscore person dot pi. Now all of the same errors will apply. So if we don't pass a name, we would get an error. And likewise, if we don't pass a language, we would get an error. But even if we pass an incorrect language, like French, for example, we should get an error. Let's check that out. And yes, we do have an error. It says invalid choice, French. We should choose from English, Spanish, or German. So let's go ahead and choose one of those. I'll enter in German and press enter. And we have Hello Dave. And I can see I forgot to put an exclamation mark inside of that function greeting. So let's go ahead and put that back. Seems like we have to have an exclamation mark with a happy greeting, right? So after German, let's put in Spanish now to test this out. And we have Hola Dave with the exclamation mark. Let's once again close the terminal here in VS Code and let's show the file tree again by clicking the Explorer icon over here. And now, as we have in previous lessons, let's create a new file. Let's call this file rps8.py because we're going to pull in the code from our previous example of rock, paper, scissors. And that file was called rps7 in the previous lesson. So let's just paste in the code from rps7 that we had. And we did learn how to make a module with our rock, paper, scissors game. But now we're going to go ahead and pass in a command line argument to the game so we can personalize the game. But before we do that, and I do want to thank Ahmad and those that comment on the videos, but especially thanks to Ahmad for catching this one, because in a previous lesson, the one on F strings, uh, we created three F strings inside of our rock, paper, scissors game. And as he noted, we no longer need to use the string constructor here in lines 63 through 65 because you can just pass game count into this F string and it will go ahead and show it without using that string constructor. So it will just make it a string as you create that F string. So we can go ahead and select all three instances of the STR and that parentheses. And I did that with control D after I selected the first one. Then I'll press backspace then of course we need to get rid of the closing parentheses on those. And this will still work without that string constructor. Now that said, and I'll save those changes, I do wanna highlight that on lines 33 and 35, you still need the string constructor here. And that's because we're applying it to that enum value, and then we're calling a string method. So we really need a string there specifically and it's not being converted before that happens. So you need to go ahead and leave that string constructor on these two lines. But on 63 through 65 here, when we have the game count player wins and Python wins, thank you Ahmad for pointing that out because I did miss that. It didn't cause an error. There was no problem other than it's just not needed. So we might as well remove it. So now let's scroll to the bottom of the file where we're calling rock, paper, scissors here. And we're going to change this just a little bit. I'm going to start by pulling this rock, paper, scissors definition here where we set it equal to RPS to create our closure. I'm just going to control X to cut that and go ahead and put it right above the call to the function here. And then let's go back to our hello person because this code that we use with arg parse is kind of boilerplate. And that means we're not changing much of this right here. We want to get a name to go ahead and pass to our game and personalize that. So let's just copy all of this, the import arg parse all the way down to where we set the args equal to parser.parseargs and control C to copy. And then let's bring it over to our rock, paper, scissors game. And this is going to go before we define rock, paper, scissors there. So right after the if name equals main, I will paste this in. Now we're not using the language argument. So then I can go ahead and remove that piece of it. Now let's change our description just a little bit. So here we'll say provides a personalized. So there we'll just change that word to personalized game 
experience. And now here, instead of the name of the person to greet, we'll say the name of the person playing the game. Playing the game. And Alt-Z wants again to wrap any code down that wants to extend off the screen. Now I'm going to remove an extra line here, and then all we need to do is pass our args.name to RPS, and now we're finished with this part, but now we're passing the name value to our rock, paper, scissors game, but our game is not handling that yet. Let's start by going to the top of the file where the function begins, and now we know it's going to receive a param, so I'll say name, and let's put a default value just in case this would be used somewhere that it doesn't receive that name, so we don't have an error if that happens. And we'll just make the default value player one. After that, we need to go ahead and put in another non-local here and pass name because it's coming from above from RPS as it goes into the play RPS function. Now let's scroll down and see where else we can use it. And one place would be here where we ask the player to enter any of the numbers for rock, paper, or scissors. Let's make this an F string and then we'll go ahead and put name in front here. So I'll say name and a comma, and then we could just make that a lowercase e. And then underneath here, we could also make this an F string and use that value. So we could say, whoops, not that. Let's go ahead, quote, and then we need a curly brace and name, and then let's put a comma, and then there we'll just put a lowercase y for you must enter as well. And you know what? Let's be a little nicer here. Let's put please in both of these. So we'll say please enter, and instead of you must enter, we'll say once again, please. And I need to get rid of that T there. Go. So it would be like Dave, please enter one, two, or three. Scrolling down just a little bit further, we have another line here where it says you. So let's change that. We already have an F string. So now I'll just go ahead and remove that capital Y and we'll put in name once again. I'll put in a comma and a lowercase u. So Dave, you chose, and then it would give that value. Now we have our nested decide winner function. So once again, we need a non-local for that name value if we're going to use it inside of this function, and we definitely are. So instead of just you win, now we could have an F string. So this once again needs to be an F here, and then we can put in our name value. So name, comma, you win. And now let's just copy this because it's also used on a couple of other lines. So control C there, and then we'll highlight this. Control D to select the next one that's identical, and then control V to paste. And we have that same F string for all of the winning messages. Let's scroll just a little bit more. And here on 56, where we have Python wins, well, that works, but we could personalize that a little bit more. Once again, we need to make that an F string if we do, and I hope I haven't missed any of those slash in, and then let's say, sorry, comma, and put in name once again. We could put in a couple of dots, so sorry, Dave. And then we could even put in an emoji, so let's find a sad emoji here. And I just typed the Windows key plus period on Windows to bring up this emoji menu. So I have a little sad face with the message that Python won instead of me. Okay, after that one, let's look a little bit further. And yes, we can provide another one here on line 67. I'm sorry, on line 66, where we say player. It doesn't need to say player. Now it could have a personalized name. So let's put in name. And after that, we need an apostrophe S. Now we can use that apostrophe because on the outside we have double quotes. So that single quote doesn't cause an issue. And how about we do the same for the play again message? So we'll put an F here to make this an F string. And instead of play again question mark, we'll have play again comma, and then we'll put in that personalized name. So it's going to ask play again Dave, for example. And let's see if there's any other instances as we scroll down. And yes, we've got thank you for playing, which is fine. We could personalize that, but let's personalize the by message instead. So we can say by and then just put name in one more time. So now we've personalized our entire game. Now I know I went over that a little bit quickly, but we covered concepts we had before from the F strings to the non-local definitions where we pulled that value into the other functions that were nested. Okay, let's hide the file tree with control B and then I'll press control and the back tick to open our terminal up again. 
I'll type clear just to clear everything out. And now let's go ahead and start our RPS8 file. Once again, we can't use the play button like we used to at the top because we need to pass in these arguments. So I'm going to say pi, and you might need to say Python 3, just depending on your operating system. Then I'll go ahead and say rps8.py, and I'm going to pass my name with a dash n as Dave. And let's see what we get. It says, Dave, please enter. And so I'm going to choose rock, and we got a tie game, but we can see Dave's wins are zero, and then it says play again Dave. So I did personalize that fairly well. Let's see if we get something else. Let me choose a number that is not one, two, or three, like five. Dave, please enter one, two, or three. So it's also being polite and working as expected. Another tie game. Let's go ahead and play till someone wins. And we've got three tie games. Let's go ahead and play again. And now, we won and it says, Dave, you win. So that's exactly what we wanted for this game. So now you know how to pass command line arguments and we've personalized our rock, paper, scissors game. Remember to keep striving for progress over perfection and a little progress every day will go a very long way. Please give this video a like if it's helped you and thank you for watching and subscribing. You're helping my channel grow. Have a great day and let's write more code together very soon.